Hey guys, I want to talk to you about next week art challenge or the week four art project and it's about um, Marc Chagall. So this week you learned that uh, Chagall used a mixture of his, um, you know, characters, fantasy, fantastical characters and memories and things from his life and things that he loved to create these fantastical scenes and um, create a narrative with his paintings. So his paintings were telling a story. When you say creating a narrative, you're telling something. Okay, so we can um, figure out a lot of meaning behind his paintings and um, personal meanings in his case. So for this painting, for instance, and this is just a picture from our Scholastic magazine. If you want to see more about Chagall or see all the artworks of his, you can log on to the magazine with our school code. But um, over here is saying that the figures and characters and things that he does on his painting supports his narrative. So there's a little bit of reality and there's a bit, little bit of fantasy on his uh, pictures. So he painted in the snowy, snowy Russian village, which uh, he we know that he's from Russia and he grew up there. So this could be the real part of his paintings. Uh, but then there's this figure with two faces and then you know a body made of a what is this a cello or a violin and then this figure here which has a human body and a goat's head so this is what we call anthropomorphic um depiction of of a uh, an animal right so he it's giving an animal or an object a, a human-like attribute, attributes. So in this case, it has a body and hands like humans, but it's actually a goat. It has a goat's head. And you see this a lot with uh, cartoon characters and um, comic books and stuff like that. Uh, an example I can think of is the uh, Beauty and the Beast. All those chairs and cups and teacups and candlesticks that uh, have human-like features. So for this week, what you're going to do is you have two options. You can sketch a scene that contains a real memory and an imaginary creature. So you're going to mix in two things like Chagall did in here, a real Russian village and then these fantastical creatures. Uh, or you're gonna sketch an object or animal with anthropomorphic characteristics in a setting it does not belong. So you have to do two things here. One, you gotta decide on, on or your animal or object, which one you're gonna draw, and then you're gonna make it look like a human, and then you're gonna put it somewhere it shouldn't be. So, I put an example here, a, a walking frog riding a motorcycle. So maybe if you think about a walking frog, a frog should be in the pond, in nature, but then this frog is riding a Harley Davidson in the city. So it's clearly where it does not belong. And I kind of wanted to show you my process here so you can see that this takes a little bit of planning and time to do, okay? So, um, I was thinking if I were going to do the project, which I will, what would I do? So I was thinking the first option, the real setting with an imaginary uh, character. So I thought about an owl and I thought about an owl being, you know, a symbol of wisdom, and um, wisdom. So, and I remember one time that my father took me to 
go to school in a tractor because our car broke down. So my first idea was, you know, a tractor with my father and me on a, you know, a sunrise with the moon up in the sky. And then this creature, like a, a owl watching over us. And, you know, I wanted to be like angel-like. So I started trying to look up references of owls. And then this guy was too angry. And then this one, I couldn't get it right. As you can see here, I don't even worry about erasing stuff when I'm doing on my sketchbook. I just move on to the next corner of the page so I can just figure out. Um, but then I realized, I said, oh, this is gonna be too complicated. It's gonna take a lot of time. I have to see all these poses. And I wasn't really in the mood because I don't know if the owl was what I wanted to do. So I started thinking about option number two, which was giving an object or an animal anthropomorphic uh, features and put it somewhere it does not belong. So I was thinking a setting, it does not belong. And then maybe a bird on the water or a fish in the, in the land and kept thinking, but then I was just thinking, what's something that does not belong? So I thought an easy way to go about that would just be look for things that will be out of place. And you can do that at your home. I know mine you can because it's kind of messy sometimes, but um, just think about simple things that could not be, maybe they're somewhere where they shouldn't be. So we, I saw this glass that I had left on my coffee table. And then I thought maybe a fork inside of a glass because a fork should really not be inside of a glass, right? So then I started to think, okay, and wanted to sketch. And then I went, and I'm gonna show you here, look for reference, references. So don't ever think that you have to do all this alone, all by yourself. Look for references, okay? I went online and just type up uh, poses of people climbing, or you can see a picture, or I can put figure drawing, using climbing. So I went and looked for a reference for a pose. Remember, you're not copying anything from anyone online, but you can use a uh, existing drawing as a reference. You just have to change it up and make it your own. So when I then I came here and wanted to start to sketch. But really, when you're doing an action pose or a dynamic pose, you should really be thinking about you know, how the body it's working, how the spine, this line here, it's moving. That detects a lot about your pose, the spine and how the arms work. I wasn't worried about, you know, flash or, or in this case, since I was going to do a fork, anything, what it's going to look like. I just want to kind of figure out which angle, which line, which way my lines would go to show the movement. Then here, I started already thinking, okay, I want it to be skinny because it's a fork. And how's the face? The face is going to be from the side. And then if here's my cup, how this hand's going to look like. And then this hand here was like, what is going to look like? And then I thought, okay, here, here will be the glass. The hand, you would see through the glass, so that would be more like it, but I didn't like and this looks really rough and really, um, you know, really out of proportion and, and weird. And it's fine because I'm just figuring things out at this point. And, you know, if you don't draw every day and it's not something that you're studying, yours are not going to look perfectly anatomic you know, like like a real hand. But you can use your hand to look. I was actually sitting and trying to imagine how it would look, see my hand from outside of a glass. So I did this and then I'm not even past the sketch phase yet. But then when I kind of figure out how the pose would be, 
I thought, okay, now maybe, then I came back and drew the glass here and it started kind of doing another sketch that's a little bit more refined and with more details. So at this point here, I had the side that I wanted it to have four legs because you know, the four usually does have four, but then my pose only have two legs. So I had to kind of figure out and I thought, okay, maybe I can just copy kind of the poses of those two outer legs and just repeat it in here. And then hopefully one, one leg is gonna be covered up by the other leg and that will be cool. So the hand, I know that the thumb is over there and you won't be able to see it. And then here, see, I don't ever use eraser because I don't wanna be worried about what I'm doing and erasing too much. It's just, I think it makes it stressful. So I just keep doing lines over and over. See here is how the fork was this long to begin with, but then I figured out it was too short. And then I thought, okay, where I'm gonna put this cup? So I decided to put it on a table, but then this is not gonna be it because I decided to put a plate in here and this guy kind of just cutting off the page and looking at him and like, come on, hurry up, what you're doing? Or, I mean, this is supposed to be a scared expression. It's not really scared right now. It's more like angry. So I'm gonna have to fix that, okay? So for this week, for your assignment, week four, what you have to do is figure out which two options are you gonna do. Are you going to do the real setting with a imaginary creature, or are you going to do the anthropomorphic big, uh, character where it does not belong, okay? So you're gonna figure these options, which one you're gonna choose, and then you're going to start sketching. So by the end of the week, if you show me a sketch, a picture of your sketchbook like this that you're trying to figure out, that is fine all good for week four. If you finish up and you complete and you color, that is fine too, even better. But you have to color and you have to do a complete drawing, okay? That drawing pretends gonna be on your portfolio and you're gonna show you know, your art school or college uh, people when you go uh, apply for a scholarship or something. Um, don't forget, if you do your final drawing, you sign your name and date, so I can see that it really belongs to you. On your sketch too, if you could, just sign the bottom of the page and you can send me the sketch of what you're doing because I don't want to, to overwhelm you for you to do everything in one week. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.